Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, which is the second one in a series of events planned by Femtonics for the coming months. I am Esther Marco, product specialist at Femtonics, and I also have Dr. Tomasz Tompa here with me today, who is my colleague from the Application Specialist Department, and he's going to help reveal the secrets of the 3D acoustic optic technology in multifloron stimulation and imaging. We hope you enjoyed our first session, which was an overview of conventional GAVO and resonance scanning technologies and related Femtonics products. And today, we are going to introduce a pioneering technology, which rather than using mechanical scanners like GAVO and or resonance scanning technologies, use acousto-optic crystals as deflectors instead. Uh, this session will be an overview of the technological background and the Femtonics product, which utilizes this technology called Fem2-3D Atlas. Future events uh, will showcase the diverse applications uh, that the acousto-optic technology enables, and another event will be introducing the software solutions Femtonics has developed. Please note that although you will be muted during the webinar, uh, you will be able to use the Q&A option at the bottom. Uh, to submit your questions, which will be answered after the presentation. In case we run out of time before we get to your question, uh, we will make sure to send you our reply in email uh, to the email address you used to register for this webinar. Um, with that being said, let's jump to today's presentation, which I recorded for you in advance in case any unforeseeable event arises. Today, we will start with a short introduction of Femtonic Solutions and discuss what 3D acousto-optical microscopy is. We will demonstrate the stability of the system and our exceptional solution for combining it with tunable wavelength laser sources. We explore what advantages of the technique are manifested in features like drift scanning, motion correction, high-speed arbitrary frame scanning, and biologically simultaneous two-photon imaging and photostimulation. We will also touch upon why the Femto 3D Atlas microscope is the fastest 2P laser scanning microscope in the world and why it is regarded as an all-in-one solution. And lastly, we will be finishing with a Q&A session. To put the acousto optical system into perspective, I'd like to briefly outline the Femtonics portfolio. Just like how the acousto optic technology is the most advanced solution currently for true 3D imaging, Femto 3D Atlas, our product utilizing this technology, is the peak of the evolution within the Femtonics portfolio as well. Our conventional solutions are the members of the Femto Smart series with three types of microscopes, GAVO, Resonant, and Dual. Advantages of these systems include that they are highly modular and can be adapted even to a more modest budget. In our previous webinar, we talked about these conventional solutions, explaining the benefits of the systems and their wide range of applications. If you're interested in further details regarding the Femto Smart product line, please check out our first webinar on the Femtonics YouTube and Vimeo channels. Alternatively, we will be happy to send you the link in email or even organize a live demonstration for you. And now, let's continue with the Femto 3D Atlas and the Acousto Optic technology. The Femto 3D Atlas 2 photon all in one microscope was developed to fulfill the most diverse kinds of 2 photon imaging needs, from fast 3D imaging to large volume scanning. The main idea behind Femto 3D Atlas was to create a flexible instrument for multiple scientific purposes with extraordinary optical performance. The brain is the most complex known structure in our universe. Imaging techniques are a great promise to reveal its secrets. Traditional 2D imaging techniques fail to grasp the spatial complexity that lies behind this vast computational power. 3D rendered volume stacks take a long time to capture and therefore cannot keep up with the speed of biological activity and a lot of information about signaling is lost. Applications like brain interfaces demand the high-speed three-dimensional capture of information. On the animation, you can see a plastic example of information being lost. Through simple 2D depiction, 
it is impossible to tell what this structure is. By using a stack of 2D images, we are closer to the solution, but details are likely to get lost and a complete 3D image is needed to see the forest through the trees. This is what our solution offers. Just exchange the trees for active neurons. The Acousto-Optical technology makes it possible for the microscope to jump to different points in a three-dimensional sample within microseconds. Therefore, we are able to sample different points of the neuronal network virtually simultaneously. Since our interest lies mainly in cell activity, by concentrating on active elements, we can gather the information of interest in a given volume within a few milliseconds. Recording strictly only on the small regions of interest will increase the signal-to-noise ratio tremendously. The technique can be used in awake, behaving animals and the fast imaging rate can be converted into high-quality motion correction. As mentioned, scanning in conventional 2P systems happens with Galvo-Galvo or Galvo-resonant moving mirrors. The inertia of the moving physical parts limits the speed of the system. In the acousto-optical system, you are taking advantage of refractive changes in tellurium dioxide crystals. By eliminating inertia-limited moving parts, you are able to reach a yet unforeseen scanning speed. This does not mean, of course, that you cannot perform GAVO and or resonant-like scanning should you wish to, but you also have access to a wide array of new possibilities that lie in random access true 3D imaging. That is why we call Femto3D Atlas an all-in-one tool. When creating Femto3D Atlas, our goal was not only to create something exquisite in the field of microscopy, but also to make this technology user-friendly and simplify this complexity at the user level and bring to life a microscope generation with long-term stability. Before going into details, let me provide some context. At the heart of the system, in the scan head, are two pairs of acousto-optic deflectors. These crystals are quite sensitive, and the laser beams must be prepared in both the external and internal light paths to compensate for dispersion, divergence, displacement, and diameter. This compensation is supported within the scan head itself, and also by the most crucial part of the external light path, the 4D beam conditioning unit. This continuous, automatic, and additional compensation made it possible to combine FEMTO3D Atlas and the acousto-optical technology with tunable lasers. Of course, the software also needed to mirror this complexity behind the intuitive and seemingly simple interface. In addition, to make the technology available for researchers with different financial backgrounds, we designed a system so that it is available not only as a standalone system, but also as an upgrade to any upright 2P microscope. And now, let's take a look at these innovations one by one. So what is exactly the acousto-optical technology? An acousto-optical deflector consists of a tellurium dioxide crystal, which is bonded to a piezoelectric transducer. The transducer emits an ultrasound wave to the crystal when driven by a sine wave. Sound waves in the crystal generate periodic changes in density and therefore the refractive index, creating a dynamical optical grid that deflects light falling through the aperture. Changing the frequency of the sinusoidal voltage changes the constant of the optical grid and thereby the angle of deflection. Note that until the acoustic frequency is unchanged, the deflected light beamlets are parallel to each other and are not focused. But the crystals can be used to focus the light. Introducing a frequency gradient will produce a gradient in the refractive index, creating different angles of deflection, resulting in focusing or defocusing. The focal distance will depend on the applied frequency and gradient. Maintaining focal distance requires maintaining the gradient, which results in an increase in mean frequency and the lateral drift of the focal point. In microscopes, stability is an important characteristic of the focal point. A technical solution published here, but similar to a Hungarian patent from 1994, stabilizes the focal point by a counter-propagating wave in a second crystal. 
Later in the talk, we will see, though, that certain movement of the focal spot is not necessarily unwanted or, more precisely, can come handy. We will get back to that point at a later stage of our presentation. Look for the term drift. Once the focal point is stable, scanning may be achieved by addressing different focal points in space with every acousto-optical cycle. An acousto-optical cycle is the time needed to fill the crystals with the appropriate frequency sound wave. The length of the acousto-optical cycle depends on several parameters, including the size of the crystals. In our systems, we typically use an acousto-optical cycle of 30 microseconds. When performing raster scanning with the acousto-optical technology, the field of view is scanned pixel by pixel, moving the focus by lines and rows. This type of scanning is not exactly fast. We use it mainly to take anatomical background images. However, if we address with the focus points scattered in a 3D volume arbitrarily, scanning becomes the fastest available 3D scan. The focal point visits a new ROI every 30 microseconds, so theoretically the maximum speed is 30 kHz. With no mechanical limitation to the movement, we reach a scanning speed which is an order of magnitude faster than traditional scanning methods. Since there are no mechanical parts in the scanner, the system is stable and lasting. Using the two-photon effect, the beam penetrates deeper into the living tissue, even in behaving animals. In this system, the resolution is maintained throughout the field of view. Due to the flexibility, we may use a wide range of specific scanning patterns to cover all kinds of possible regions of interest. And last but not least, the lack of mechanical movement means lack of acoustic noise, which may be very important in behavioral experiments. As mentioned, the laser beams must be conditioned before arriving at the acousto-optical deflectors, and this preparation takes place in the external light path. An essential component of this pathway is the 4D beam conditioning unit, which contains all the optical elements to compensate for large material dispersion with automatic beam stabilization. The name is derived from the four Ds of dispersion, diameter, divergence, and displacement. Dispersion is a temporal phenomenon. The duration of laser pulses increase as a consequence of passing through the optical elements. Since it is essential in two-photon microscopy for these pulses to be sufficiently short, we need to compensate for this broadening. Divergence and the increase of beam diameter during beam propagation depend on the lasers and wavelength. Different lasers emit beams of different diameters and divergence at different wavelengths. In the 4D BCU unit, we adjust these parameters according to the needs of the microscope. And last but not least, we compensate for any position or, or angular displacement of the laser beam using the integrated beam stabilizer so that the full optical path stays well aligned regardless of wavelength tuning. Conveniently, users do not need any special knowledge or skills to set up the laser beam, and the 4D BCU is a closed system. The automatic wavelength and group delay dispersion tuning makes it possible to use different wavelengths in the acousto-optical microscope without spending a lot of precious measurement time with the tuning. The two beam stabilizer units in the outer light path and the atlas scan had saved the user the tedious work of centering the beam manually as it had to be done for quite a long time in the history of laser scanning microscopy. Our automated solution ensures the best quality image possible. At two crucial points of the light path, quadrant detectors monitor whether the beam is well centered and motorized mirrors promptly correct for any eventual misalignment before it could even happen. The video shows the initial centering of the two beams before starting the experiment. Elaborate mechanisms enable our software to control elements of the light path, including the acousto-optical deflectors. This can be done manually by the user, and it can be also preset in the experimental protocols by the protocol editor. The complex, automized optical system allows the user to optimize the microscope specifically for given wavelengths, making the system even more flexible. As you can see here, you may adjust the laser wavelength from the main console of the software, and it communicates with the laser driver, 
while suggesting the optical elements of the light path also. To learn more details about our software solutions, stay tuned for our upcoming webinars. With the Acousto optical technology, the focus of the laser can move independently of the focal plane of the objective. Therefore, the focus in depth can be changed without moving the objective. This in itself has a lot of advantages, for example, in electrophysiology, and enables fast and accurate movement in Z. Here you can see that thanks to the well-set optical parameters, the change in the point spread function and the size of the focal point is under control and close to the theoretical optimum, as published in our 2016 Neuron paper. The Gaussian graphs represent the dimensions in microns of the point spread function. Femto 3D Atlas and its complex functions are controlled by the Measurement Control and Analysis software package MES, written specifically for femtonics microscopes. This reliable and user-friendly software background helps the researcher to take benefit of the acoustic optical technology with a wide variety of region of interest scanning modes and photostimulation solutions. It provides great flexibility in experimental design and data analysis, providing offline motion correction. A detailed introduction of the Femtonic software solutions will be the subject of a separate webinar session. The activity of the brain is worth measuring when it is doing its job, organizing behavior in awake organisms. Behavior comes with movement. Intrinsic tissue movements due to the heartbeat and breathing will interfere with recording. Beyond the point scan measurement, the speed and flexibility of the AO scanning provides an option to record small areas or even volumes around the point of interest with comparable speed, keeping information recorded which would otherwise be lost due to movement artifacts. On this slide, you see the so-called ribbon-type recording of dendrites of a cortical neuron during the movement of a mouse. Rendered in a 2D plane, you may compare the raw and motion-corrected activity recording. Recording of the aforementioned areas with high speed is made possible by a technical tour de force called the drift scan. This type of scanning utilizes the computed and directed version of the drift of the acousto optical focal point, resulting from the frequency changes of the waves, called chirps, in the crystals. This allows to record line segments instead of points during the same AO cycle time. Using further math, the drift can be made longer and the raster scan faster than in the case of a resonant microscope becomes possible. Here, you can see the demonstration of that principle. Please note that the speed on the display serves illustration purposes. Obviously, scanning of a line occurs indefinitely faster, resulting in the video, which is an actual AO raster scan. This mode is called the High Speed Arbitrary Frame Scanning Mode and it provides a scanning speed of 40 frames per second at a large 500 by 500 micron field of view. Thanks to the acoustic optical technology, the fast scan plane can be either perpendicular to the axis of the objective or can have an arbitrary angle in X and Y so you can tilt your focal plane in any direction in the tissue and you are not confined anymore to the focal plane of the objective. Navigating through your sample in 3D is made easy by our new user interface elements. If you want to further increase speed, focus on a smaller area so you can reach 3000 frames per second. Compared to conventional resonant microscopes, the system is silent as there is no scanner noise. This feature may be very important in experiments involving behavior. At high speed, we do not lose image quality. Therefore, high optical resolution gives access to submicron features. Given the speed of the acousto optical microscope, you can also extend the recorded plane into a volume, again, tilted in any direction. The spacing, size, and slant of the recorded plane and the size of the volume can be changed with great freedom. This way, the technique also provides a viable alternative for Bessel beam recordings, whilst offering solutions requiring more Z details. The acoustic optical technology provides a good tool for precisely guided photostimulation. In our high-end Femto 3D Atlas Dicro microscope, two precisely aligned laser beams of different wavelengths are synchronized on the hardware and software level. 
This makes it possible to stimulate hundreds of regions of interest whilst biologically simultaneously recording the activity of the same or different spots. The minimal switching time between the two modes equals the length of an acousto-optical cycle, so it is around 30 microseconds. Both the recording and the stimulation may be done with flexible parameters and patterns. The precisely targeted, virtually simultaneous 3D stimulation and 3D imaging are supported by fast temporal and spatial resolution. There are several options to choose from a wide range of patterns to stimulate up to 100 or more locations with a millisecond temporal and 0.5 micrometer spatial resolution, and the resolution is independent of the number of targets. Depending on the selected scanning pattern, users can stimulate sparsely distributed individual cells or dendritic processes in a large volume with high precision. The different photostimulation patterns will be presented in our next webinar. One of our notable technological innovations is that the 3D acousto-optic technology is available not only as a standalone product with a so-called 2P platform, but it can also serve as an upgrade to any femtosmart microscope or any upright 2P microscope from other providers as well. Should you be interested in the latter option, our optical department will be happy to learn about your current system and design how it will be combined with Femto3D Atlas. Reaching the end of the presentation, let me highlight the advantages of 3D acousto-optical imaging and some of why Femto3D Atlas can be viewed as an all-in-one solution for your biological application. With high-speed 3D random access scanning, an astonishing 30 kHz speed can be reached at your region of interest. The 3D anti-motion technology eliminates artifacts arising from the movement of the sample, making the system suitable for the imaging of behaving animals as well. High-speed arbitrary frame scanning provides 40 Hz per frame scanning speed. Thanks to the acousto-optical technology, the imaged plane can be arbitrarily chosen, tilted, and rotated. In vivo 4D volume scanning allows imaging along the entire length of different cells in different layers for extended periods of time. Using two laser lines, biologically simultaneous 3D photostimulation and 3D imaging are possible. You can choose to upgrade your existing upright microscope with this outstanding 3D technology as well. With Fenta 3D Atlas, you will have access to the benefits of conventional 2P microscopy and ultra-fast 3D imaging as well. The unique properties of Femto3D Atlas enable researchers to image neural, dendritic, and other neurophil activities in 3D about 1 million times faster compared to conventional 2P microscopy. With the different 3D ROI scanning patterns like chessboard scanning, a network of more than 300 regions is easy to track. With high-speed arbitrary frame scanning, the plane can be arbitrarily chosen, tilted, and rotated. Thanks to this, apical dendrites can be conveniently investigated. In the 4D volume scanning mode, the user can measure the activities from different layers biologically simultaneously, so it is possible to examine the network between cells in different planes. The 3D anti-motion technology corrects artifacts arising from the movement of behaving animals. For example, in the 3D ribbon scanning mode, we reasonably oversample around the region of interest, therefore we don't lose information and obtain a higher signal-to-noise ratio. Femto 3D Atlas allows for the simultaneous use of multiple laser lines at the same time, at different wavelengths for photo simulation and for imaging. For example, with the 3D random access point scanning method, up to 100 cells can be stimulated and neural activity can be recorded at the same time by rapidly switching to 2P imaging. To sum up, the Femto 3D Atlas implements traditional GALVO and resonance scanner based 2 photo microscope imaging functions and combines these with a unique fast 3D imaging feature giving ultimate freedom in sampling, thus provides an all-in-one solution for scientists. Our acousto-optical solution was published in the most renowned papers like Nature Methods, Neuron and Science and we are happy to have contributed to the success of our customers with not only a cutting-edge product 
but also with dedicated scientific and technological support teams. Our full list of publications can be found on our website with further papers in Nature Communications, eLife, Neuroscience, Brain Structure and Function, and others. Thank you so much for your attention. We will now proceed with the questions. So welcome back, we're live again. We've received quite a few questions. Um, so let's get started. First one would be, uh, are there any special laser requirements for the system? How likely is it that I can use my existing tunable laser source? That's a pretty common question. All commercially available titanium sapphire femtosecond pulse lasers are uh, compatible with the Atlas and um, we can recommend specific ones or a specific combination of them for your specific application. Okay. Tomasz, I think this is for you. What's the typical depth one can reach with Atlas? Yeah, that's right. As we know, one of the advantages of the two photon technology is basically the depth one, what one can reach when imaging the tissue and uh, the same thing in the in vivo cortical recordings. Uh, so depth is basically a crucial question here. Uh, of course, we also know that uh, the question how deep we can record depends on lots of factors, those factors being the success of your surgery, quality of the surgery, the quality of, of the staining, the type of uh, the marker you're using. But one can safely say that if you use a calcium uh, marker as we do, like the, the GCAMP 6 or similar, then with the Atlas system, given that uh, everything else goes well, you can safely image down to 800 microns. Uh, and if you use like red shifted dyes, then even down to one millimeter or deeper than that, I have done some images uh, in similar depths. And uh, if you're using an in vivo, in vitro sample uh, with, uh, for example, some kind of tissue clearing methods, then you can go beyond one millimeter. So if we are talking about the cortex, then uh, recordings in layer five and six uh, are basically within reach, I guess. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mm, next one. Um, are there any special objective requirements for the Atlas system? I have a 20x2P objective. Would it work? Yes. Um, in fact, most of our customers uh, use Atlas together with a 16x or 20x objective and uh, even higher magnification objectives can be used. Um, but we always like to discuss this um, when designing a new ordered system. Okay. Uh, Tomas, again, I think this is for you. Can I track my sample in long time lapse types of experiments? Yes, actually, we are receiving this question from uh, more and more customers who uh, plan to buy their systems if that's possible to record volume recordings long term and when we are talking long term recordings that may mean even just hours or days or even longer than that and our system together with the software is ready for these kinds of recordings so besides that you can uh, image those volumes uh, arbitrarily tilted in three dimensions in different kinds of tissues it is also possible with a module called uh, meta protocol to put together these protocols uh, of volume scanning and at given time intervals repeat those volume scans so that the resu result will be a time lapse uh, volume image movie and that can be done in the time span of uh, hours days or even longer than that so that's indeed possible thank you Okay, uh, 
I think this is to you as well. What options are there for simultaneous imaging and photo stimulation? Uh, is Atlas compatible with SLM or do you have a similar solution for 3D photo stimulation? If so, what are the advantages of your stimulation method? Thank you. Fortunately, that's quite an easy question to answer since part of the webinar uh, was basically consecrated to that question. Of course, the dichroic version of Atlas is made for simultaneous imaging and stimulation as we have seen it and stimulation that can be uncaging or optogenetic stimulation or other kind of stimulation as well and uh, basically the two can happen parallelly in a quasi simultaneous manner and when i say quasi simultaneous that means that the shortest switch time in between stimulation and imaging happens may happen within a single AO cycle, which is 30 microseconds, but of course that depends on the, of your, your actual frame rate of your recording, frame by frame, you can record and stimulate. Uh, the question about the SLM, the Atlas is not compatible with the SLM kind of stimulating, but it doesn't have to be since it provides an even more flexible and temporally and spatially even more precise manner of a pattern kind of stimulation. Again, both in time and uh, space, it can be extremely precisely targeted, just like imaging. So you can do uh, similar imaging and stimulating patterns through a single sweep of recording. And this is sort of a, a quasi simultaneous recording and stimulation. Mm -hmm. That's the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Can I use whole field led photo stimulation? And I saw somewhere another one which was related to another module. Yes, uh, they were asking about acute slices. Can I use Atlas for in vitro studies as well? So uh, yes, there are. there's a, a range of additional optional modules available uh, for Atlas. Uh, such as uh, an in vitro module and whole field led photo stimulation as well. Um, regarding the in vitro module, um, we discussed it in more detail in our last webinar, uh, which is already up on YouTube and Vimeo, so you might want to check that out as well. Did you answer the lead photo stimulation question? Um, yeah, yes, just say yes, it's possible. <laughs> it Certainly. is possible and there is um, a separate module available for that. Okay. Mm. Hi, when scanning multiple frames, how fast are these acquired at 500 by 500 micron per frame? If 40 hertz, is it around 5 hertz for 8 planes? Also, what is the lateral resolution in frame scanning mode? Tamash, I think this is for you. Yes, in fact, your computation is right. So, of course, uh, we have this great advantage in Atlas, which is the high speed arbitrary frame scan, which can go up to like 40 hertz for the 500 by 500 uh, pixel or micron, whichever uh, frame. And if you extend that to a volume by recording several planes, then of course what happens is you have to divide for the volume scan for to, to get the, the speed of the volume scan you have to divide the single uh, frame scan time and in that case that is going to be 40 by 8 so that's uh, 40 by f uh, 8 which is going to be 5 hertz in that case but of course again it depends on the number of the planes you try to record as it uh, comes to the lateral resolution, the question of the lateral resolution uh, of the high speed arbitrary frame scan, I think we can safely say that the resolution does not change when we compare it to the pixel by pixel recording, since uh, the resolution of the recording depends on the speed of the digitization of the system uh, of the of the signal. Uh, on the other hand, as a trade off with uh, speed and recording, the signal to noise ratio won't be as good as with the slower pixel wise recording. Uh, 
when we visualize data, we do compensate for that with an, an averaging, but that only concerns the visualization. So you record all the data as you recorded them. Uh, but the resolution, uh, keeping in mind that the signal to noise ratio is a little bit lower, the resolution laterally remains the same. Thank you. Okay. What wavelength range can you tune over and what is the time taken to change from one wavelength to another? Really so. good question. As you have seen, uh, one of the outstanding uh, features of Atlas is that uh, you are not confined to a single wavelength, but you can use tunable lasers and you can change uh, the laser's wavelength and the time uh, required for the wavelength change basically only depends on the uh, time what is required for the laser to change the wavelength it doesn't depend on the system on the other hand if you're using two input lasers like in the case of the simultaneous imaging and photostimulation or you can use both lasers for for uh, imaging uh, basically then the switch between the two different wavelengths occurs uh, at the uh, speed of the frame change which when it's fastest it's again the AO cycle which is 30 microseconds uh, on the other hand if you have only one laser or if you want to change uh, the wavelength on the on one of the lasers in your system then the time you have to wait until the change it only depends on the laser itself you can preset these wavelength changes in the experimental protocol uh, and the flexibility of the changes provided by our uh, protocol editor which helps uh, which assists uh, uh, designing and planning your experiment and uh, the details of that uh, protocol editor how to use it will be discussed uh, later in the upcoming webinars about the applications and about the software driving or atlas system yep thank you um and i think uh we are running out of time um yes uh, so i think this concludes our q a session um thank you very much for being here with us today uh, we hope you enjoyed our webinar and uh, please do stay tuned uh, for our upcoming sessions, which Thomas just mentioned as well, that there will be a separate one. Um, it will be uh, a live demonstration uh, at an internal atlas at our facilities with a uh, behaving animal. Um, and then there we will be a separate session uh, demonstrating uh, our softwares that we developed. And uh, we hope to see you at the online version of FENCE also. And besides, should any more question arise, we're always eager to respond. So please don't hesitate to send them by mail to us and we will uh, get back to you. Get back to you. Exactly. So thank you very you much. <laughs> <laughs> see you. Bye Have bye. Have a great time. Bye.